Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In today's Gospel, Jesus heals the man born blind. And he also heals us. So for the times we have failed uh, to witness to this healing, the times that we remain blind to the injustices in the world, we ask the Lord for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented the seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest, who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. He will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to him. He was ready. The youth answered to the bowl and making his splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers, and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him. The Word. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will be the light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Until they summoned the parents of the one 
who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where he, this one is from. The men answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, Yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin. And you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saved, we see. So your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Well, thank you for uh, joining us on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Um, even though it's your last day of your spring break. So praise God and thank you for making the Lord a priority. You know, every single year I go in for my annual eye exam. And I always go around this time, January or February, um, and get my eyes checked. And uh, recently uh, I went and I found out that my vision is getting slightly worse. Huh? Um, but I cannot imagine a time without wearing glasses or contact lenses. Maybe it was because of all those times of squinting, trying to see the board at school, um, I was a good student, <laughs> and that I, have, that I have very bad astigmatism uh, in both eyes. But because of going to the doctor regularly and getting new contact lenses and new glasses, uh, this last time, the doctor gave me a very strong lens that now my vision, as uh, she said, is 2015, which is better than 2020 vision. So that means I can see you if you come uh, late to Mass or leave Mass early. Huh? So 
you better watch out. <laughs> but without the help of glasses or lenses, I wouldn't be able to see you clearly. In some sense, I would be, quote unquote, a blind man. A blind man in today's gospel is the, store, is the center uh, figure. Huh? We hear the disciples of Jesus, after seeing him, uh, they treated him as a topic of conversation and inquiry. But it was his blindness, not the fact that he was a suffering person begging for help, um, that was the focus of their attention. They asked Jesus about the reason for his blindness. They say, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? You see, people in the time of Jesus believed that a physical infirmity was a result of a sin, whether it was committed by the person themselves or by their parents. And that is why the disciples have such a question. But the disciples, in the answer of Jesus, were in for a surprise. They never could have imagined that the afflicted man would play a part in revealing God's wonderful works. Jesus answers their question, and he says, neither he nor his parents sinned. He, he puts the blame elsewhere, maybe even on the very people who are blaming others for their dire conditions. God is not punishing the man for sin. Indeed, God wants to do something that will deliver the man from his blindness. So after enlightening his disciples, Jesus sets about changing the man's condition. He goes and heals him. But in this whole gospel, we see not only one form of curing of blindness, but he cures two forms of blindness. Huh? He enables both the man to physically see and his disciples to see a different perspective. Physical healing, but also spiritual healing. You see, Jesus doesn't see only one person who is ill. He sees this blindness as another example of the human condition that he has come to alleviate. And so the man becomes a symbol. He represents us. He represents all of humanity, for we do not see. Because blindness is a universal ailment that afflicts humanity physical, and spiritual. Sometimes we are blind to God's presence in our lives. And sometimes we are blind to the needs of our neighbors, our brothers and sisters. In the Gospel, we hear the healing happen, happen very quickly. But Jesus gives the man his physical sight. But it is only the first step of the man's journey to spiritual sight. In the confrontation he has with the Pharisees, the man will continue to progress from his newly uh, acquired physical sight to spiritual sight. He will see who Jesus is and come to faith, while the Pharisees will progress even further into their blindness. They will think they know it all, when in fact they are not even aware that they know nothing. And so they become or go into the dark. This is kind of like the theme of the whole Gospel of John, huh? That in the, the, the progression of the Gospel, the disciples come to light, and the religious figures, the Pharisees, go into darkness. But on the other hand, Throughout the story, the man admits his ignorance about many things. In doing that, unlike the Pharisees, he is open to change. After he is thrown out by the Pharisees, Jesus returns to him. And the man admits his need to Jesus. Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And so Jesus reveals himself 
to the man, and then the man responds in faith, and he worships him. The former blind man has come to sight in many ways as he goes from unbelief to faith. But so, does, so do we. We go from unbelief to faith. And so in some ways, this story is about us, huh? And it also poses a challenge as well. Is it possible that the places we think that we are seeing clearly, we are not? Remember, the ones who were sure that they knew what was going on, the Pharisees were blind. They were the religious experts, but they missed the truth, staring them in the face. The one who is confounding them and turning their world upside down was really God, trying to open their eyes and to set things right. And so the Lord also does that for us. He opens our eyes and He sets things right. And so this reading that we get today is a good reminder for us, even in the middle of our Lenten journey, huh? It should give us a, a cause of joy. Why? Because Jesus has healed our blindness. We too have encountered Jesus the same way. We made that same journey that He did. We were led to a pool of water, washed there, and words were spoken over us. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And that journey began guided by the sight that we have received in those waters. Because in baptism, we were given clearer sight with which to look at our, our world in a different lens, to see as God does. But oftentimes, we, all, we were hardhead, huh? Just like me when I was growing up. I watched TV too close, that's why I'm blind. That we, our visions get a little bit blurred, and we need Jesus to heal them. And because our eye, and so the questions that we should ask ourselves are these. What do we see as a result of that washing at the pool of baptism? Has the sight that we have received in that washing affected our priorities and our life choices? Well, because our eyes have been opened, we see that all people are our brothers and sisters, our neighbors. We see that having all that we ever wanted can leave us dissatisfied and poor in God's sight. We see that even in sickness and in old age, there is great value and beauty. We see that God is not someone on high to fear, but someone up close who walks with us in life. Even as a college student, God walks with us. So like the blind man, the waters have opened our eyes and we see with the eyes of Jesus. May we then recommit ourselves in this midpoint of our Lenten journey to once again let the Lord come to us and lead us to that healing waters and to be nourished by Him in this Eucharist because Jesus is truly the light for a dark world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all 
all the faithful who are made. For us men who are salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who is incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and punished his power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Every day the works of God are made visible by our faith. And so in faith we turn to God with our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers, always striving to see God's works made manifest. For the church, that the light would shine upon the world, they spread the love of Christ all for God's children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who live in the darkness of war, oppression, and poverty, they find hope in the light of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be initiated into the church at Easter, that they may realize the grace of seeing with eyes of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our student community, and for all gathered here, that the new light we see in nature this spring, and be reflected in the renewal of our mission in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers on our parish website, prayer book, and for those we know mention. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the students who are traveling back to the university, that the Lord will keep them safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for our beloved dead, especially those from our Newman community who have died recently, Carmen Salazar, and Franco Kabakunga Jr. Let us pray to the Lord. First of all, Lord, life was your very first gift in creation, and your greatest gift in the person of your Son, the light of the world. Hear these prayers we offer you and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord. Praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Once more giving you thanks, 
handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sight of peace.
let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Uh, it's our Sunday, Rejoice Sunday. We're uh, almost there. That's uh, our uh, August week um, in the Feast of Triduum. So please uh, hang in there in your Lenten journey. And we'll see you uh, soon. Please, stay, uh, please be well. And we'll see you uh, next uh, Sunday. Uh, after Mass today, all, all our students are invited for our Sunday night student dinner uh, on this side of the chapel. Please take home a parish bulletin for more information about what's happening in our parish and in our diocese. This coming Wednesday um, is our Lenten Penance service. There will be several priests available for confession and absolution. So please uh, take that opportunity to, to go to confession um, this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Okay, so we'll see. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light unto those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. We've been sharing and singing our Sunday Court song, I am the light of the world, following in your comments. <laughs> 